Hey guys, I just wanted to start off by saying a huge thank you for everyone who's left me comments and feedback for the previous couple of videos that I did. I'm super glad that they've come into good use for you guys, so I'd like to continue along that thread and do videos which focuses on one topic at a time, and I'll add those into the same playlist as my walkthrough videos. And if you guys are interested in these types of videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you again so much for all the support. Today's Second Life Photography quick tip is going to be the removal of green screen. This is a technique used by many people from Second Life to real life, and there's so many different ways of doing it in Photoshop that I wanted to show you guys the various methods I've learned over the years, just to give you more options of how to do so, and let you guys pick out the one that you prefer. So the way that this video is going to be structured is I will first introduce what a green screen is, and then show you the method that I prefer and use the most often. After which, I'll show you a couple more different ways to do it, and also finally how to refine any green screen selections that I do make. Feel free to use the timestamps to jump to whichever method that you're most interested to look at. A green screen image are images like these which contain a very bright background. This particular image is done by Indy Dufault and it's actually a pile up image for her birthday. So if you guys want some practice, do hop over to her Flickr, use her image, send her a pile up and wish her a happy birthday. So for me personally, I really wanted to use her image for this walkthrough because she's played such a huge part of my second life. So happy birthday, Indy. I love you. So back to what we were talking about initially, which is green screen. The process of removing green screen is also known in the post-production industry as chroma keying. Chroma keying just means the removal of a specific color from an image to be able to kind of layer that image above another one or a different background. More people call it green screen because predominantly the color green is used for this instance. The reason is because green doesn't normally match any natural skin tone or hair color, so it becomes a lot easier to select out. In the industry itself, when green is a part of the actor or a costume, then a blue screen would be used instead. However, in Second Life, we find that we have skin tones of every color. So in the case of Second Life, you can pretty much use any color background that you want, as long as none of those tones are part of the character. So make sure you go really bright and really neon, and you can use that color for the process of chroma keying. I'm now going to show you guys all the different methods for green screen or chroma keying, and I'm going to start all of them off pretty much the same way. So I'll always have four layers available. One is going to be a working layer, which is where we're going to make our selection from. I have an original so that I never lose that. And then two solid colors underneath, one purple, which is a little bit obnoxious, and one a little bit more neutral just so you guys can see the selection on two different solid colors. The first method that I'll be showing you guys is the color range method. This is my preferred method because you can easily create a Photoshop action for it. And what a Photoshop action does is that it's going to allow you to repeat the process again and again over multiple images. So what you want to do is select the layer that you're working off of and then go to select color range. And it's just going to pull up a window. But what this allows you to do is select out any color that you want. And it's just going to mask that out for you. If you want to increase your selection, you can either press the shift key and then just select out another green. Or you can use this particular icon here to add to your selection and just select out all the different greens available. Once you're done with that, you can kind of see which areas have been selected out and which areas have not been. And you can increase the fuzziness to make this selection a little bit more refined. So the lower fuzziness you go, if you look at the hair area, it's going to be more solid. But if you go up a little bit higher, it's just going to kind of do an entire layers for you. So I like to push this up all the way high and just click OK. A marquee is going to appear around your image, and this is where you can kind of just hit the mask option from your layers tab and create a layer mask for it. So that's pretty much it for this method. It's super easy and it's super quick as well. 
Now I'm going to show you how you can create an action for this so that you can repeat it across multiple images. So you want to go up to Window and then click Actions. And it's just going to pull up this little action window right here. The first thing that you can do with an actions window is create a new set of actions. So let's say for this particular set, I'm going to use this for any Second Life actions. And now I can create a new action by clicking on this particular icon and name this whatever action that you want. When you see this red dot turn on, it's basically starting to record all your actions in Photoshop. So I'll make this go a little bit quicker just so you guys don't have to see the entire process again. The moment I create a mask for this particular layer, I'm going to hit on stop. Once you hit stop, Photoshop will stop recording all your actions. And now you're going to have this particular action called green screen layer that you can use across the board for different images. So here I've created another layer and we haven't done a green screen process on it. Rather than go through the entire step again and again, what I can do is just select this particular action and then hit play. And it's just going to do that process for you automatically. The color range method is honestly one of the quickest ways to do green screen or chroma keying. It is also the most repeatable method, so that's what I really like to use. And if you have a lot of images or constantly do green screen, this particular Photoshop action is going to save you a lot of time. The next method we'll be going through is the magic wand method. The magic wand method is going to be the quickest and dirtiest method. In a sense, you can get this done super fast and super straightforward, but it's also the most imprecise and the lowest amount of control. So what we're going to do is navigate down to the magic wand, and this is going to allow you to make any selection on your image. So setting this on its default, when I select the green, and if I zoom in, you guys can see how imprecise this particular selection is going to be. And we can make this more precise by increasing the tolerance setting. If I set this to 50 and make the same selection, you guys can see how much cleaner that selection was. However, the higher that you go, the more it's going to bleed into your selection. And sometimes for hair, it can be a little bit better not to have your tolerance value set too high. The numbers I like to use is approximately 22 to 30, and I mess around with those ranges just to see which one works the best. If I were to create a mask using this selection, it kind of masks out the item instead of the background. So what you can do is click on your mask, and then go to Image, Adjustments, Invert. The selection that I've made is a little bit pixelated, and this is where anti-alias comes into play. So I've undoed all my steps and I'm just going to click on anti-alias and click on this selection again and do the same process. And you can see how much cleaner that is. So that was the magic wand selection. But if you can tell, there's a lot of rough edges on the hair area, which I really don't like using this method for. Obviously, we can definitely clean this up as well. But if you want something cleaner, you might want to pick the other methods that I'm showing you guys. The third method that I'll be showing you guys is Background Erase. Background Erase is another one that I see used very often and it's equally efficient as well. So what you want to do is navigate down to the Erase tool and just click and hover on it for quite some time. You want to hit the Background Eraser tool and this is what we're going to use. The Background Erase tool is going to allow you to erase out a specific color from the scene. There's going to be multiple ways of sampling that color. The first icon here is going to be continuous sampling, which is continuously sampling your colors while you're clicking. So this is really efficient if your background has multiple colors on it. But in this case, because I was dragging it across the face of the avatar, it was also sampling the colors within that as well. The next sampling option is going to be determined by which color you click on first. So if I click on the green, and just continuously drag across the image without lifting up my click, it's just going to erase every single green that it comes across. If there's certain areas that you left out, all you have to do is click that area, make sure it's the green, and then just erase it. And you can repeat this process until you get everything erased out of it. The last one is going to be dependent on the color swatch here. So you have to set this to a particular green in order to select that out. You want to select your background swatch, 
click on the green, and this is going to be the swatch that they use to clean things out. So now every time you click on it, it's just going to clean out that green. What you see happening is that you have a lot of bald spots missing, and this is because the tolerancy is not set high enough. So if you were to kind of push this tolerancy all the way to 100, and repeat that same process again, you see that you get a cleaner erase on this particular background. For this particular method, sometimes you have to zoom in really close to select out a little green that you might have missed out, and that's honestly the only reason why I don't particularly like this method. So I went ahead and finished cleaning up the image, and this is the result that I got from it. The background erase method is one that I see used very often by second lifers, and there's a good reason why. The way that hair in second life captures out in an image benefits really well from this method because you can get a very precise cleanup around the hair alphas. This might not be the most straightforward one-click method, but it can produce a very clean result and is honestly one of the least cleanups to do, so it's very viable for sure. The final method I want to go through with you guys is called the channels layer method. It is the least straightforward approach and almost unnecessary for Second Life because this method is honestly used more for real life retouching. The most beneficial use I see for this method is when you have very complicated hair like an afro or one with a whole bunch of flyaway strands, you might need to extract out all those little details from the background. Another case for why this can be awesome is that you might not always approach an image thinking you're going to do a chroma key. So you took it with a white or a more muted colored background. Whatever background you use, this method will sometimes still allow you to do a clean extraction. So in Photoshop, every layer that you're working on is going to have corresponding channels attached to it. So if you were to click on this working layer and navigate to the channels tab, you're going to find that this particular layer has a RGB, and then you're going to have a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. So what we're trying to do with this particular method is to utilize one of the RGB channels to create a layer mask. For this particular image, I found that the blue channel isn't very good to use because of how much fading you can see at the root of the hair. So it fades out so much into the background that we're not going to be able to get a good extraction. With the red channel, you kind of notice the same thing even though everything is significantly lighter on the subject. So what I decided to use was the green channel, where you see a very strong contrast around the edge of the subject to the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click the green channel and duplicate it, and just click OK. We're going to click on the green copy and work on this one instead. So what we want to do now is to adjust the levels of this particular channel. So we're going to navigate to Image, Adjustments, Levels. Adjust the sliders of the input levels to ensure that you have a very high contrast of your subject to your background. So I'm just going to take the paintbrush and kind of paint in all the areas that I need to have completely black. And this is what we're going to use as a layer mask. What you want to remember about layer mask is that anything that is white is going to be opaque and anything that is black is going to be transparent. So I'm going to invert this by going to Image, Adjustments, invert. So in order to turn this into an alpha, I'm going to hit my control button and click on the thumbnail of this green copy. Navigate back to our layers. Click on your working layer again, and then just click on this icon here to create a mask. This is the final extraction result I got from using this channels method. I honestly really love this method because of how clean you can get your extraction to look and how much control you can have. I often find that as long as my background is pretty much a solid color, one of my channels layer is always going to be able to be used as an alpha mask, with a little bit of adjustment. So I find this to be an incredibly powerful thing to know how to do. So here are the final results from all four different methods that I've shown you guys. I'm placing them side by side so that you can compare each one with the other. Obviously what you will end up with depends on your own editing and selection, but these are just examples. I'm going to show them on a contrasted bright background so that you guys can see the difference much better. And these next ones are going to be on a more neutral background, which I'll be using for my edit.
The final look differs per method and there's really pros and cons for each of them. It's all about how efficient the method is going to be, how much touch-ups you're going to need to do, how much destruction happens on the original image, as well as how much pixelating happens on the selection we end up having. All those are some different factors that will contribute to you deciding which method is going to work the best for you. At the end of the day, no matter which option you decide to go with, there will always be refining and touch-ups that you need to do. Since I normally use color range, that will be the example I'll be using to show you guys what I personally do to touch up all the green areas that still show up within the image. Once you've made a masking layer for whatever method you decide to use, when you zoom into this image, you're going to notice that there's a halo green effect around the entire body, as well as around all the different flyaway hairs of the image. So those are some of the areas that we need to refine in this process. The first thing that I like to do is to do a global refinement around the mask that we've created. So I'm going to zoom in just so that we can see the detail a lot better. I'm going to double click the mask that I've created and it's going to pull up a window that allows you to create a bit more refinement to your mask. What I tend to like to do is shift the edge a little bit closer to the left hand side and what that does is just go a little bit inwards towards the subject. You don't want to do it too much because you start to lose a lot of these fine detail on the hair. The next thing that I like to do is increase the smoothness a little bit higher so that the selection gets a little bit smoother. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to click OK. If I undo, you're going to be able to see how much refinement we've done to get rid of the halo around the skin. So just by doing that global refinement, we've gotten rid of a lot of the greens in the image. I'm going to switch to the neutral background so I can really focus in on getting rid of that green cast that happens on all the little alpha strands. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer and then I'm going to right click on that layer and click create clipping mask. Once we turn this into a clipping mask, whatever that we paint on this layer is still going to be affected by the mask right underneath it. Now I'm going to change the blend mode to color and I'm going to start to paint on this image. I'll zoom in. I'm going to take my paint brush, use the alt key to select any of the color from the hair itself and just start painting. So what's happening with this process is because this layer mode is set to color, whatever color that we are putting down, the pixel underneath it is just going to take on that particular color. And because there's a clipping mask on it, it never goes out of the selection that we have. Now that we've cleaned up all the green casts on our subject, we can merge these layers down and complete the green screen or chroma keying process. So now it doesn't matter what background you decide to use for this image, everything is going to work perfectly. So we've reached the end of this video and I hope that you guys have found this useful and found a method that you prefer for green screen extractions. Till next time, I hope you guys have an awesome day ahead of you.